Hello folks, some of you may have noticed that we took a picture of the lunar eclipse the other night and were honoured that it has been clicked on so many times, so we thought we'd show you how we did it. So first of all, it's all about the foreground. So here I've loaded in the six photographs that we took of the temple. And I'm just going to play with them to make them absolutely right. Set the white balance, set the exposure. You know, this isn't right. I, I don't like this picture. I'm going to choose to another one. I'm just adjust the microphone. I'm going to flip to another one that's got more of the building in it so I can actually see some of the, the interesting stuff. Yeah, that's better. So, let's try this again. Keeping the white balance kind of funky because I want the sky to be blue and there's obviously tons of light pollution. Hello, Josie. Good girl. Good girl. Alright, where was I? Alright, put the blacks down. I'm basically just whacking sliders around. The camera's captured tons of colour information, tons of light information. We've just got to make it look good. Alright, I'm quite happy with that one. So let's add some curves. Undo the lens profile and then we'll just uh, synchronise all of that together. Actually, you know, screw it. We'll just hit the check all button and do it all. Alright, scroll through these. Just up and down on the mouse keys here. Yep, they all look consistent and good. So that's the foreground, you know, kind of done. Let's just save those settings. And then obviously the next thing we have to do is stitch them together in a panorama. So for that we go to Photoshop and we just use the default settings and it kind of speed up a bit, tell you the truth. But we still wait, because they're big images. Look at my hair, isn't that nice? And come on, any second now. Boom! There it is! Ignore the little lightning things, they go away when I hit uh, layer flatten. And there's a lot of noise in the picture, so we get rid of that using my favourite tool, which is Topaz. Let's find something like that minaret there. And I try and use as little noise reduction as possible, so I'm going to try and get away with moderate. Yes, I think moderate works. So we'll hit that, and that takes a few seconds to process, and... Alright, now the clever bit. I'm shrinking the picture, just using the zoom control on my mouse here. I'm going to use the free transform, sorry, the warp transform tool. And I'm going to bend the picture. I'm going to push it all out to try and fill the frame. And then I want to push the bottom up to straighten all the lines. The building is square, it's not curved, it's a very square building, even though it's got pretty pumps on the top. So I need to just, right, let me just crop this in a little bit. Uh, do that again. I'm not really happy with that. Let's pull this corner out. I'm stretching the pixels all over the place here, but that's okay. Alright, and then we'll do a final crop. And there. That's okay. Yeah, foreground. There we go. We now have a foreground. Let's take one look at that. That's not so bad. Nice and clear. Very simple. Very simple edit. So now let's add the moon. As you can see, I've got hundreds and hundreds of shots of the moon here. They're taken roughly three minutes apart. I say roughly because I forgot to use my intervalometer because for reasons I won't bore you with. But I've selected the ones that I think are appropriate. And I'm going to load them all into RAW at the same time. Now there are essentially three types here. There's the pre-eclipse, the eclipse, and the post-eclipse. So my guess is I have to process them all separate. Those three separate. So let's just pick one of the pre-eclipse and change it around. The white balance doesn't really matter. This is a black and white picture to all intents and purposes. Uh, oh, crazy. Don't do that. Uh, sliding it around. Just trying to get some detail out of the moon. This was taken at 200 millimeters on a full frame sensor. And all right, that one's pretty horrendous. But the rest of them are okay. They're all synchronized. That, that's not so bad. All right, now we're into the eclipse bit, and that looks kind of dodgy. So let's select all of the eclipse ones together, and I'm going to process them all at the same time. So they're going to need more highlights, and they're going to need a little less contrast, a little bit more black, and then my favorite bit in a second, a bit of black. I'm going to give them tons of vibrancy. It, wasn't, it was a bright red moon, but now it's a really bright red moon. All right, and then now for the final third. I could probably actually just copy the settings I did for the first third of these, but as soon as I didn't write them down. Uh, let me just move this around. Oh, All right, they look good. Let me scroll through using the cursor. Now look how the moon's moving. You can see how I kept refocusing the, repositioning the camera, refocusing the whole thing. So you can see the angle 
that the moon was coming out of the sky. And that's really important. You need to remember this angle. So we've got a nice curve down to the right. All right, let me save these settings away into bridge. And then I'm going to use my other favorite tool, which is uh, Dr. Brown's services. There we go, stack o -matic. And I'm going to load all 65 of these images to the blend mode of screen. Now, screen says put all the images on top of each other, but let the light pixels show through. So basically, it throws away all the dark, keeps all the light. And look at that, 65 moons, all roughly in about the same place. And again, you can see the angle of the curve. You can see where it entered the heavens at the top and exited the hells at the bottom. Probably not heaven and hell. Let me switch them all on and off for that. All right, this is going to be the, the weird bit. This is where we're cheating. We're not pretending this is a real photorealistic image. So firstly, I have to make the canvas bigger because obviously the sensor only took this much and I kept moving it and making it and repositioning it. So I need to make the whole screen a lot bigger. So we do that. Now I need to add a black background, which I will do here just for that. Now, remember that curve? A lot of people would use the pen tool for this, but I have never learned how to use it. So I'm going to draw a circle that's about right. Let me zoom in using the little pinch thing on the mouse and that circle's about right. I'm using the nudge keys. I'm holding down the shift and it's moving them 10 pixels at a time. Every time I move it up, I, I, I move it to the right at the same time. I'm now hitting Control J, duplicating the circle. And I've made a parallel circle by again using the nudge keys, the up and down keys. And now just by dragging the moons, I can see roughly how far they should be apart. And again, not photorealistic. I'm just gonna move all the moons into this disc so they form that nice, even arc. Of course, I could have done this with a panoramic head, maybe, some kind of saltwater tracking, funky fangdango thing, but mm, this is just way easier. So I'm going to move all of these into here and just repeat 65 times. So let's fade away. All right, this is the finished version. Not so bad. There's a lot of light pollution in the middle, which we'll get rid of in a second. Uh, but first of all, given that we've decided this isn't photorealistic, I'm going to use the magnetic lasso tool, which I know you should never do. And obviously, by the way, I've flattened the layers here while I was off camera. Save some memory. I'm going to select the moon and move the bright red moon, the one I like, and I'm going to move it over to one of the crescent moons. Because the camera can either select the dark side of the moon, in which case it blows out the highlights, or it can select the light side of the moon, in which case it can't even see the dark side. Now the eye, we can kind of do a little bit different with that. So we're going to simulate what the eye saw, not what the camera saw. So I'm moving all of these red moons over the brightly lit eclipsing moon. And then I'm just going to lower the opacity here, fade them away. Oh, too, many, too many layers on that one. There we go, here we go. Fade them away. So this is kind of what the eye saw. So now I'm seeing the dark side with detail and the light side with detail. Which, really, you can't do this with... You, you might be able to do it with your eye, but you certainly can't do it with a camera. You just move that one around. But it makes for a more interesting picture, because people expect the moon to be round. Alright, that's the top bit. Put them into a little group. Call that waxing. Although it's not. And then I'm going to do the same for the bottom, which I'll probably put in a group and call waning. And again, it's not either, but I'm not an astrologer. Or even an astronomer. Astronomer. Oh, and now I can't talk. Fabulous. Lowering the opacity to fade in just a little bit of the dark side of the moon. There we go. Let's have a look at that. That's not so bad. That looks really nice. Now, we need the foreground. So, here's my foreground. Let me load that in. Alright, it takes a while. They're big pictures. Now I've loaded in the moons in a separate uh, tab. I'm going to flatten these just to make it easier. Move the tab off in a separate window. That enables me to drag and drop between the two windows. I'm going to drag, there we go, the moons onto it. Change the motor overlay so they lighten up and then just drop them in place. And there they are. Now they're way too big. So I use the transform tool, which is command T. And I just put the moons where I know they should be. At about the size that I think they should be. Now these are actually about 100% bigger than they were in real life. And if you visit the blog, you'll see that. But I'm going to put them there. I think that looks nice. Now, about this light pollution I mentioned. You can see it there. There's all sorts of red, nasty stuff. So let's zoom in. There it is. Let me show you another trick. 
I'm gonna get this little brush thing here. This is called the mask brush. Actually, it probably isn't, but quick mask brush, that's what it's called. I'm making sure it's in additive mode. I've set the brush size to be about the size of the moon, and I'm just selecting the moons. I'm gonna select them all. Scroll down by holding the space bar. Oop, that one went a bit wrong. I'll go back and fix that. Put the minus tool, subtract tool. Just paint out. Shrink the brush using the brackets, the left and right brackets. Now I'm going to increase the size of the brush using the right bracket and keep going. There we go. Selecting all of these. I'm just going to try and select all the ones that were in the red area. So I want to throw away all of the red. The red sky, that is obviously not the red moon. And then I add a mask. And look at that. Now I can only see. With no red left, I can only see the moons. They've all gone. But then again, so are all the moons I didn't select. So I'll just get a paintbrush and paint them back in. Painting white on a black mask reveals. And there we go. That is moons over a San Jose temple. Not bad, huh? And only in 11 minutes. Thank you very, very much for your time. And thank you for liking and sharing my picture so much. I truly appreciate it. It's an honor. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.